there's a lot that happened this week like you know champions league europa league how english clubs shat their beds but you know the world goes on and like you know we are recording this immediately after the penalties of united and coventry so so much got packed in this week believe it or not and i think we'll try to do justice and cover all of those topics uh, the train has to st- stop somewhere and i think i wanted to stop at like city chelsea because what a weird game guys like did you think that uh, city were uh, this was the worst performance i think i'd rank it below uh, villa you know villa away where they only had one shot i think it is comparable performance do you guys agree like that they were weird like city was a weird city that showed up um i do agree and i don't agree as well i think they were not the best uh, they this seemed lethargic and didn't seem like they were up for it but then mm-hmm. again uh, to be very fair to city they did play real madrid like two days uh, before and they got knocked out like at penalties after 120 minutes of like an extreme game so that's psychologically that's really hard to come back from and straight up to wembley for a fa cup semi final and they still ended up you know winning this so fair play to them honestly from from my side yep i i totally agree and i think i mean it should the entire turmoil of like playing real madrid over 120 minutes and i think that should have a side effect and that actually showed in the first half or so chelsea have, have had like so many chances i mean we can do an entire segment on nicolas jackson but anyway let's just leave it at that but you know they be, city were were there to be taken uh, and again even in the last minutes as well i think uh, they had a good chance chelsea had a good chance to equalize and then you know get something out of the game or, or at least take it to the penalties they had chances chelsea scored it up and you know city just kind of persevered i guess prayag yeah, don't you agree yeah. like chelsea thoughts on chelsea's performance bro because i think there is a lot to unpack there yeah city is one side of the equation but yeah i mean what neerav said about the circumstances right so it, it was it was an ideal opportunity for chelsea to take advantage of that uh, it's we have been seeing this over and over again that teams that we expect uh to perform well against chelsea they don't and teams that we expect chelsea to beat that also they don't <laughs> i'm even arsenal struggled with chelsea right and mm-hmm. uh, even city struggled the last time they play i think it was 4-4 it or 3-3 chelsea can play well when they need to but i think they have a huge deadwood problem like they have a lot of useless players uh, i don't know what they're going to do with players like nicholas jackson and maduike and enzo fernandes i think that cole palma had a couple of opportunities but at the end of the day it was chelsea's game to win and i think the xg was like what 1.5 versus 0.5 or something like that mm-hmm. no so, actually this was an ideal uh... opportunity for chelsea and actually both of, both of city and chelsea had an xg close to 1 so oh. like but i think chelsea had more right? 1.1 chelsea had like barely a more 0.2 more and momentum tracker shows literally city to have more of the momentum i know it's kind of skewed sometimes mm-hmm. but city also did have like you know 14 shots to chelsea's 10 62% possession they just whenever city are not clinical they seem like the most boring team in the world so that's what happens to you <laughs> and it's just not clinical they just seem heavily boring and they just seem like they're struggling but they're actually not struggling but si- they in, they had control over the game. case right i don't know if it comes into the xg there were plenty of opportunities where they missed passed if mm-hmm. they had yeah. given a proper pass it would have been like a high xg opportunity exactly so if you include that as well right i think the xg would have been much higher I mean, you can't I mean, blame it on XG if you if you don't create it. <laughs> I think that's basically yeah. what happened with, with Nicholas Jackson, right? I think if he had mm. at least got the shot off that one on one, which which he was put through, at least if he had mm. got the shot off, there would have been some XG accumulated. But if he was one on one, he didn't even get a shot off. He went around the keeper and everything. So I think that's basically where the stats are skewed. But if you just kind of the just the eye test, just to watch the match, Chelsea had so many things. Even that uh, that the, the, towards the end, uh, Chilwell had. Could have passed to Sterling one on one. I mean, I'm pretty sure Sterling would have missed it, but at least that would have created some XG out of it. And because there were so many chances, which they just couldn't like even, you know, create them in the first place. There were so many opportunities there. Yeah, and also I mean, just uh, just giving like Nicholas Jackson the the fair like the uh, his from his point of view, he did play well. He was pressing the team really well. Um, it's just that he just I don't know why he decides not to shoot when there is a shooting opportunity. 
he does everything right except for making the final incision um and i think that is something that can be worked on right like his his yeah. hold up play is good I, i like him as like a player um he did everything beat the offside trap just went like rounded ortega but just didn't pull off the shot that was that was annoying obviously rashmi nira we have been working on that since the last year with darwin nunes he try he does everything he does or he creates he makes those runs incisive passes and everything he has that vision sometimes but in front of the goal he just freezes and that is something at least you have it or you don't have it i mean we can I mean, when nunes actually still has 14 goals this season darwin nunes yes, still has 20 20, yeah there. but they're so i mean they're so frustrating to watch and they will miss this chances because again it's a game of very fine margins right i mean at this mm-hmm. level chelsea and city and title challenge whatever and if you miss those chances like jackson did against city or or nunes did against luton whatever so these things will come back and bite you and that's what's happening i don't think yeah. chelsea has the privilege to develop players they don't have the time they have to like start winning games now they have to do something they're in a very difficult financial situation so they can't be like oh we'll develop this guy you know he'll improve he's not good they have to kick him out to something But else let me let me play a devil's advocate though because so they can they're still in a place where they can finish in europe their mm. performances are picking up yes there mm. is that good but i mean they'll probably move them on like they'll they make they might make a loss but I feel like something's going right for Pochettino at Chelsea against mm-hmm. all odds. I'm because they hit rock bottom. The only way I was up and rightfully they're going up. I think like it's not all too bad. I think those kind of things are like you can work them work on them. Like Nico Jackson, hopefully like maybe he'll come back with 20 goals next season. We'll see. I think sometimes you just have to be really shit in order to make yourself look a little better later. I think you have to start really. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure is not that off like now it seems like Pochettino is doing something and Ten Hag did the opposite right like he had a decent on paper a decent season last year and this year he's shitting his pants if last year they would have finished 8th or something this year would have looked better um, no. so all about perspective that well, at least they didn't lose what 7-0 to Liverpool this year That game that is an exaggeration. I'm I'm telling you as a Liverpool fan, those shots were fluky. Those games that that is, I mean, as much as I loved it, it's still an exaggeration to be honest. Uh, we, let's go on the Ten Hag love fest later. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's tickle that bone later. But I don't think I'm in all honesty. I don't think Chelsea are that far off. They might still mm. have a decent season next season. We will. I'll be there to tell you guys. I told you so. But let's move on. <laughs> let's get to that roast later of Ten Hag and me. But uh, what did you guys think about like Pep's comments, bro? Like he had something interesting to say in like the post match, right? Um, I, about congestion. Yeah. Club has been saying some of those same things. So I've been out. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I can totally resonate with what he said, right? I think basically, with it, all of this is being done to maximize TV revenue, and I think the way the fixtures are structured in UK. it's basically two channels like sky and bt or right now i think it's tnt i guess they are trying to kind of see which games they get and the only reason why, what i can think of is why this uh, city chelsea match was scheduled for saturday is because chelsea are playing on tuesday chelsea are playing arsenal on tuesday and that's the slot bt wanted because they because again if you go back this fixture was rescheduled from 14th of march or something uh, it was supposed to be on a 6:30 a you know the lunch time kick off which is basically bt's time slot and because they wanted a match for themselves to maximize the revenue that, that's the only match on tuesday and all the other matches were, i think it's have... i think it's bullshit he just shut the fuck up he's going around wearing a 2 million dollar watch he's clearly benefiting from all those <laughs> no <laughs> yeah the okay. we we'll, we'll get to that we we'll get to that definitely we'll get to that i mean yeah i mean see i have no love for pep guardiola right but i think i can see the i can see the lo- logic there right it, it's basically what beat has been doing and what and how they are kind of just holding these clubs to ransom in some ways because again same thing right next week if you see uh, the west ham liverpool match or uh, everton everton chelsea everton liverpool match there is no reason why liverpool have to be playing at 6:30 or the lunch time kick off on Saturday morning mm. when they're playing on Wednesday night. It's just the scheduling. It's just that BT wants those matches to be played that way, and that's been that's what's been happening. Not just this season. Again, like this season is kind of more evident, I guess. But even the last three seasons, or you know, whenever uh, Liverpool comes back from international break or something, there there is this, again there is a good stat like where there are eight lunchtime kickoffs for Liverpool, and then there are the next highest is three for other other clubs and top six clubs or something. 
So again, this has been happening for a while, and that's what basically Pep Guardiola was telling was saying as well. I can say a lot of these things, but nothing is going to change. I can probably rant right now, but then, but it's all based on the contracts and the fixtures. Anyone with some common sense can actually move these fixtures around, and actually, some of that actually has happened because there, there was one match this season. I think it was uh, Arsenal again. I'm not sure. Arsenal played a match away on Wednesday night in Champions League, and then they had a lunchtime kickoff on Saturday morning. And that was moved from lunchtime to, I think, uh, in, in the night time or something. Mm-hmm, yeah. So they got like six hours. There was a reason. Rest or something. That's the only thing that they could like probably move in some ways. That's the only thing that they changed. But everything else, I think it's just the same. It's basically basically from Sky and BT. And it, it's going to continue. I mean, from my perspective, I think I agree with Prayag here. Uh, he gets paid a lot of money and the reason he gets paid a lot of money is because Man City is rich. The reason Man City is rich is because uh, the Sheikhs have invested in Man City. A lot of dinosaurs died in the Middle East. Because because the Premier League is really big and the reason the Premier League is really big is because of TV money. So everything Mm. ties down before that. You have a billion dollar squad Use the other players. Simple. Just use the Mm. other players. There are so many other players you have. Use them. Why do you have to use the same players again and again? You want to win, right? So that's this is how it is. And it's the same thing for everyone. It's not Man City aren't the last people, the only team who has been affected by this. A lot of other teams have been. I do understand there was it was a little unlucky that like you know Chelsea played. uh, I mean, United and Coventry could have played today, uh, yesterday, and Mm -hmm. City and. uh, uh, Chelsea could have played today, but you know, tough luck doesn't matter. Just play it. So you, you can't cry every single time. You have a huge squad. Just yeah. play with them mm-hmm. and, and rotate. That's how everyone does. I mean, it, another argument is that both Liverpool and Arsenal also had midweek grueling fixtures, away fixtures, and still came and played almost with same day's difference. Neither of these te- two teams complained, and there was an opportunity for him. Like, instead of people questioning whether if it's a dip on performance, he just took the easy way out. Is my perspective of his commentary post-match. Because it was there, it was the lowest hanging fruit for him to use as an excuse. And like, you know, he nailed it and that's it. He's just cranky after losing to Madrid. No, I think exactly. this season he's been he's been more composed. To be very honest, I think he's been all sarcastic and everything in the press conferences. He's being all giving off this this vibe and all that. But again, I think I can see I can he see that point. He outsourced some of his comments to his players. I think uh, Rodby <laughs> said right. There's only one team playing on the pitch. <laughs> oh yeah, that. yeah, with with Rodri and everything. Yeah, dude. Also, Pep Guardiola, Pep Guardiola works by polar like you know just you know motivating his uh, players and he needs a reason every time. Last year, the reason was, you know, that we have to go for a treble. We, you know, we have to beat this Arsenal squad. They're coming up. We don't want, uh, you know, we don't want them to unsettle us. This year, it's now it's probably, he's probably telling them that like, you know, everyone's against us. So they're <laughs> scheduling all these tough things. So like motivate yourself and we, are, we have to win four in a row. Every year, there's something new and that's that's why he's like the greatest manager. Because he finds these small reasons to piss the, his players off and they all just go on and win. Going from one of the greatest managers, arguably an all-time, to one of the clowns that we're seeing in the Premier League. Right? I think, <laughs> I mean, I have to say, I'm, I'm being too harsh. That's why I didn't want to wear any of the United like gear to the pod today because I'm pissed. This is my protest. Bro. Like, uh, <laughs> as, as rival fan fans, like, what do you, what is your perception of this like banter era at United? Like this for us, it's painful to watch. I want to know your thoughts actually. Go ahead, guys. I, I have I've already told, told way too much. I've told way too <laughs> yeah. much. I mean, this is. I want to hear you guys first. He's not making it. He's making. He's not making it easier for himself by the way he speaks, right? The way he presents himself. He's just making it very easy for all of us to hate him. It's. It's not like, oh, we hate him because he's a rival or something like that. It's more like, I don't like his fucking face. He's annoying. <laughs> I don't like the things that he's saying. It's yeah, become very trivial. It's become yeah, very trivial just, things bro. now. Why do you go so personal, bro? <laughs> no, but, but he is. I was standing up for Ten Hag, by the way. Remember, I was advocating that this guy needs to stay for one more season when Radcliffe cleans up the club. But then now it's like, he's just being now arrogant. He started annoying you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. No, uh, but, of course, no. it's like it's it's totally out of their hands. Like they can't do anything now. They they can't do anything in the Premier League. 
I mean, maybe the FA Cup. They're not going to be in the Champions League next year. So, <laughs> it's like back to square one. Or even Logically, worse, I would say. Initially, when like I had, like, you know, I was criticizing Ten Hag the whole season. Even like, or, like since, I think it started literally from the week after the Carabao Cup final last year when you guys won. And then you guys mm. got humbled by Liverpool that week. Um, was when I thought that okay, this guy is not. He's just he's just a vibes manager. He's not really a strong individual. And I thought there are a lot of reasons. I thought still he has control over the players. He still has control over. Like he still is a disciplined daddy. He looked a little tough, and he looked like uh, there are people respect him. Uh, but he just does, doesn't have the right tactics. But this year I've seen something even worse. I feel like. Players have stopped respecting him. I feel like no one really listens to him and he blabbers all almost all the time. He doesn't motivate his team. The team, like, sometimes Klopp's team come out of halftime looking like animals. Like, you know, that he's motivated them to another. Even Anne just shown that. After halftime, sometimes Tottenham are a different team. Arteta has done that. Every team does that. But United just look like they go, go into halftime... And they just they just coming out like fuck. What was this guy saying? I'm like 15 minutes have wasted of my life. I just want to go play. So I don't know. That's an outside thought of the things that have made more sense this year. It's even it's been even worse. Like than tactics. I don't even want to go to tactics because I think the way he's playing at United is not sustainable to win uh, nothing more than top games here and there. Uh, he can't win a league with this kind of football. And yeah, he's he's a polarizing figure. He he's he's you know he's fought with so many players. It's just been it's just been a train wreck. And the sooner it ends, the better it is for United. Yeah, and I think I think he's also like making the whole thing more toxic now. So the players can't even get into the right mindset. Like what you said, like after half time, if if they are mm-hmm. not getting motivated, that means that it's getting worse and worse. Right, every week there's more pressure, and this guy's probably. Like trying different things, but not, none of it is working. So it's going to like make everyone lose hope, feel like yeah. there's nothing to play for. And this is like every competition. Like if you see Champions <clears throat> League, he finished last in the group. We don't even talk about that. He finished Man <laughs> United finished last in the group. Didn't even qualify for Europa League. Don't talk about that possibility of finishing seventh or eighth this year. Okay, fine. You got into an FA Cup final, but let's not even talk about that. Like how that happened. Um, so it's it's almost embarrassing. There are a lot of good managers available this year, but also a lot of teams looking for managers. But again, United is like a top job for anyone, especially under this new ownership. I feel like it's a golden opportunity to start afresh, um, and you know, give the money, give the initial investment, and everything to an actual proper manager, and not waste it again. Otherwise, it'll be it'll, we'll keep going in circles. And what's more embarrassing is that Liverpool lost four points in an FA Cup quarterfinal to this manager, and that's what kind of keeps me awake at night. In in a title <laughs> race of this magnitude <laughs> and this closeness, we lost four points. And I don't know, man. How that um, Diallo goal still kind of keeps me awake at night. The only thing that could have made it better was maybe a four-three Coventry winner, which was almost there and you know got ruled out today. But yeah, I think I think I think he's just on borrowed time right now, Ten Hag. But that's- Talking right, I mean the way he plays football, that kind of transitional counter-attacking play, he can get those odd results. Yeah, I can. I'm even. I I think he can probably get an FA Cup this year for sure. But I think it should be the Van Hart treatment. Like get the FA Cup, bring it to Old Trafford, give it to us, and get out. You know, it's simple. No, and, and they're getting the basics wrong, right? Like they're not they're conceding so many goals. It means there's zero discipline, and that's like yeah. the basic yeah. thing a manager should be doing. Yeah, yeah. go on. I agree with all of your points. Like, and no, let's not even get into tactics. To your to your point, you know, like the traits or like a how a human being or a manager should be at a club are like missing. His panicking in press conferences. I'm I can't believe that he's not able to like motivate players to go out after like, like uh, after like you know ninety minutes today. He wasn't even talking to the players, dude. Like it was Steve McLaren and the other coaches that were actually talking to players. Like, players were there. To like absorb information and like try to do something in the game, but like he doesn't have a game plan. Like there is no plan B, there was no plan C. He only had one plan for United, and it's clearly not working. The best thing about today actually is that like it was today had to happen. I think today was the final nail in the coffin. Doesn't really matter what happened with FA Cup result at this point and where we finish in Premier League. I think everyone's seen enough. And they are going to move on. And that's probably the best thing that will come out of this run, right? Like where 
with the we've seen united concede 20 shots in almost every game including today's game and today was a championship team come on dude like have yeah. some like spine like this guy has, should res- i would resign dude if i was ten hag and be like i don't even want that like paycheck please i've embarrassed myself and the club enough like let's move on from this experience but uh, it was painful and weirdly enough when we went to penalties i really thought that like i wanted coventry to win somewhere deep down because i was like i want this nightmare to end Commentary winning would have meant that he would have gotten sacked today and someone would see the season out. But unfortunately, now we have to wait till the end of the season. Like, and that's it. That's the, the sacking is in, inevitable. It'll happen towards the end of the season after the FA Cup. Like Van Hal. No, I totally yeah. agree. And I think, I think he's the only manager, I think, who doesn't get the stature of United. Right? Because your previous managers, Solskjaer or Van Hal or Mourinho... As bad as they were in, 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 in their own ways, I think at least they were kind of living up to the club stature. I think this is basically Van Hal is in that David Moyes kind of thing, like where he was put in a job which was too big for him. And you can see how it's kind of, you know, he is going to, he's, you know, the, his press conferences, his demeanor and everything, it, it's just not suiting up. And I think at some point, sooner rather than later, he has to be put out of his misery, man. I think it's it's just too much for him. And I, as Nirav said, I think the players are not listening to him. Nothing's happening. There is, again... Prayag wants to punch his face. So, but yeah, again, it, everything's kind of gone. Everything's gone. <laughs> there is no redeeming factor there. Let's fuck this mediocre, sad shit because I don't want to talk about <laughs> it anymore. Please have some sympathy for me. Like, I'm going through enough. Let's just go across and look at the midweek fixtures, right? Because title race is still open. Guys, Liverpool and Arsenal both are ahead of City. Like, fuck their game in hand. I want them to drop points. I want some more smiling faces on this pod. Not like, this can't be therapy for broken fans. This has to be like the back fourth where people are like rooting for their teams to compete for titles. So, let's go to Merseyside, bro. Everton, Liverpool. What are you expecting? I mean, no, quick. Prime quick. Barcelona. <laughs> Everton is going to play the Prime Barcelona. Yeah, I think they will. I think based on tonight's, uh, I mean, today's match, I think I think it should be a good match and I think we should be able to win. I was very suspect of how we were going to play today at Fulham because given everything that happened over Atlanta and, and Bristol Palace previously, I was like, okay, we are going to throw in the towel and then we're just going to kind of, you know, maybe drop points this match and then play the remaining five fixtures with no pressure and just give whatever that whatever is remaining of the farewell tour to Klopp. Uh, but I think based on how today, and I think we also rested like Salah and Sobozla and a lot of other players, first team players, right? So they should be back for Everton. And again, this is a fixture. It's not as 50-50 as United-Liverpool, but again, it's still a derby. It's still Everton and Liverpool. So at some point, our quality will and should shine through. So I think we should win like 2-0 or 3-1 or something. Um, Everton are, like, not, are not that great. I mean, today, you know, you've seen all of that happening with Forrest. I think you should have at least had like two or three penalties there. Um, but Everton is not in a good spot right now. Uh, yeah, last, much he said, Derby for Klopp's. Things should work out. I think we should get three points. But again, with Liverpool, you never know. We'll see. <laughs> It's I just feel like, uh, you know, the last few games that I'm seeing Liverpool, uh, they don't have that, you know, inevitableness that they've had, like, during the run-in for the past, I don't know how many years. They seem more edgy and I feel like teams could really, really frustrate them. Um, I have some hope from Everton. As I think I said previously also, there's a fixture that I was earmarking for uh, uh, Liverpool to drop points. It wasn't West Ham, it wasn't Aston Villa, it wasn't even Tottenham. It was this Everton derby because uh, um, Everton finally have an opportunity to, you know, ruin Klopp's, do something to Liverpool, you know, make them shake a little bit. There's some amount of input they can add to Liverpool's, uh, you know, Klopp's legacy here. And this is the only time. If they actually beat Liverpool, I think Liverpool's side to challenge is over. You agree, right? I mean, if yeah. there's one more L for both Arsenal and Liverpool, another L means you're out for yeah, sure. City not- is not yeah. even City isn't losing more than one game for yeah. sure. Even a draw, I think we are done. Like four points. Even I think, so, yeah. So I think right at this point of time, we all we need is basically just getting over the line, hook or crook. Uh, and if we drop, even if you're like dropping two points, um, a title race is over for us. So yeah, and uh, just coming to Liverpool's game again, like the they did the rotate the team a little bit. So that's where I thought that it's going to be a little bit tricky for them, but they came out on top. Uh, they they had they rested all their players. Also, we couldn't do that. Uh, 
and you could see like uh, our players being really really tired wolves were like on top of us for the most of the game and liverpool managed to get points uh, by rotating their team as well so that's a, that's a good thing that happened to them but again it's all on wednesday i hope you know everton comes sean dyche comes with some haram ball and just, you know gets matches that one point and that's all we need that's all we need cuz arsenal have tough games coming up yeah, um, yeah. next three games for arsenal are, are the ones which are going to make or break yeah and i think i think that's basically the performance today is the only thing which is giving me confidence basically and traditionally as well uh, during the title title run ins everton game 7 cause like they didn't cause us that much of a heartbreak like united did but you know i think this we should be okay with the everton match i have very low i don't know hopes on the west ham away match uh, at lunch time kick offs i don't know what's going to happen there uh, west ham are not good though, right like west ham just are like but, a very in by crystal palace today they got pumped by crystal palace they're getting pumped everywhere so yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll but they're right. I think they were a pretty decent season, season so far, though. Finishing eighth. Not I mean, according to the amount of money they spend, dude. They have some top players. They should be doing better. Mm-hmm. Definitely, they probably. Mm-hmm. I would say they have the eighth best team um, in the Premier League, which should be overachieving a little bit because of, like, right now. I feel like it could also be they have a team which possibly is slightly at par with Newcastle, as good as Aston Villa. I would say. I think player to player, it's not. that big of a difference maybe in some some areas but they do have a really good uh, you know alvarez paqueta is like a really good midfield they they have a good team yeah. but uh, yeah coming back to everton i haven't i don't remember liverpool everton beating liverpool in long i think the last time that i remember was ancelotti uh, that one nil ancelotti Probably. i think it was during the covid time i think when the fans were not there i think there was that 2-0 mm-hmm. match or something to trent penalty 2-0 yeah ancelotti only and uh, yeah Anfield. after that after that everton's only gotten pumped so yeah hopefully let's say i mean uh, if you look at city's remaining fixtures right so i think we would want them to face teams that are desperate to win uh, so they should be in a position where they're desperate to win right No one so has a thing. Hmm? Except for Nottingham Forest, maybe. No, I mean, if it comes down to the wire for fourth place, I think Spurs might be in a desperate situation to win, to be in top Spurs four. Spurs might. It might be done for Spurs by the time. Yeah. You know, but so if, that's the thing, if right? If we beat, beat if, if no, if we yeah. beat Spurs, we need to make sure that Aston Villa is also losing games there, mm-hmm. so that they yeah. are in a position to still make it to top four. Uh, I don't see. I don't see Brighton. With, doing anything against city honestly i see... i see aston villa getting uh, six points in the next uh, uh three games uh, against brighton chelsea and liverpool the reason i'm saying this is because they've been strong at home uh, chelsea are the it's a different kind of team more transitional team i just feel like aston villa the way they play they can they can really beat brighton and uh, chelsea also i do feel like uh, because of the fact that they have this six point lead over tottenham um they just need three more points in order to secure this because tottenham have che- arsenal chelsea liverpool and city so i would say um in these four games if i have to give tottenham the max number of points i would say four i don't think they get more than four points um so let's just mm-hmm. say they f- and if they win both of their other games they probably have 10 more points they finish at 70 so aston villa just need four more points out of the remaining games um to get that I feel like they could just finish that in the next two games, and then Tottenham don't have anything to play for. And then, you know, knowing that Arsenal could win the league against uh, if they beat City, they're just gonna send mm. in Oliver <laughs> Skip and I don't know. Beating. Uh, son, son, son. They, they, they're going to do what uh, the Villa did against City. They, they're going to play yeah. the B team. At their legs. Yeah. And in But... Arsenal's case, you know, we have a lot of potential party poopers. Um, like let's I think we'll get to the party. Let's, let's talk about the one that's coming up next, right? Like the, part, <laughs> the worst the one. one. <laughs> Historically, they have always decided the title by like playing the party pooper. Like I could think of like Spurs, um, you know, for Leicester, the famous Leicester, uh, you know, uh, title. So there is something, and I'm, I'm, I want. I'm curious. Do you <laughs> perceive this as a threat or no? You can say Neal, shut the fuck up. Chelsea are unpredictable. That I, I'll have to admit that because of our previous run-in, right? 
mm-hmm. me like uh, that mudrik goal what was that but it happened it still happened so yeah. with chelsea you never know what's going what you're going to get he meant it um, no dude did the way chelsea play right it's it's kind of tricky um, mm. and i feel like they would be up against you know beating us and uh, they they really strong transition team so if we if we come to play proper football they could hurt us uh, just like they were almost hurting city uh, and this time they could actually take the chances so it's not going to be an easy game at all uh, but i'm still fairly confident uh, i feel yeah. like the players would be up for it Nick, um, nicholas jackson will suddenly have learned how to finish over the weekend <laughs> 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 no, I'm more confident about this game than the other coming games. Uh, I mm-hmm. feel like this one will yeah. be we can like actually get there. A uh, team like bounce back against Wolves was good. Um uh, really happy with Trossard. Prag he's turning out to be the most clutch player we've had in like years, yeah. right? True. Yeah, uh, when we absolutely need something, he just comes in like scores like a an interesting goal and just like bounces back to the bench and this is something so, it, it appears like everyone is acknowledging now it seems hmm. to be like it's not just like the fans are saying it even the pundits are saying it and like I mean, and i think hmm. the teams are also feeling that when he comes out that this guy is you know quite dangerous i so, mean you guys had your goals across the squad which is a great yeah. thing at arsenal i think prosad is it has though? i mean nine. is it all is it always so great because we are now looking at a situation where we are not able to convert our chances like I mean, to the point really where we should be doing it i mean i mean except that like you take out the weird three fixtures in between which was very recent hmm. before, but hmm. 2024 has been a gr- good year right like you guys yeah, have been scored definitely you were yeah. so like there are gas across the field and i think it's a good thing like the only the, if you guys get a like high conversion striker like someone hmm. in like like Nisak I think is readily available it could uh, you know be very 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 fruitful that you have more options and also a primary striker but that's a topic for another day I mean I don't understand the, the criticism for getting a striker because we scored the most goals in the league I think that's not the only problem sometimes your no, players I, are I, th- I think maybe I'm problem. a fraud talking about a situation where our players don't turn up like what if we just think like, if your players don't bo- turn up your striker also won't turn up right like I mean why would the striker change anything that's the thing right if the striker does turn up on that game like just like one moment is enough like you've seen harlan right he's been shit hmm. the entire game and then he scores hmm. two goals when it matters so hmm. it feels like we don't have a player to depend on for that like a sudden counter attack could also does something well be an attacking midfielder the player could be a winger the player could be anywhere i would say it's as important to get like a left winger than a striker or like hmm. a hybrid or something but yeah you're right mm-hmm. you know the when when things are a little sticky when you're playing a low block we probably need that like i, I just want to say one thing right the the trussard goal this weekend i think it just sums up the whole thing right like jesus gets it he's uh, juggling it around <laughs> i don't know what he's trying to do there and then trussard just touches it like literally it's not even like a good contact and go goes yeah. like in the top corner so it's like Yeah. the biggest contrast between Jesus and <laughs> Trossard <laughs> he doesn't try to Trossard keeps it simple and he just yeah. scores i mean Trossard yeah. is kind of that guy that we can depend on to score like his finishing is pretty fucking good so we need to admit that yeah and uh, coming just just like replying to a lot of people like heard a lot of chatter saying that you know arteta it's been 5 years and he's just he's basically won nothing uh, mm. this year also probably if he goes trophy less this is a failure i like just as arteta said i haven't seen one team and if you guys can help me out who have stayed out of the champions league for 7 years mm. or haven't finished in the top 4 for 7 years and then comes back to challenge 2 years in a row i can guarantee you there'll be zero so mm. the, the criticism is quite unfair i don't think it's it's valid at all um do you have anything to say about that i, I swear you know, we are i swear we are going to be seeing a certain narrative at the end of the season if united wins the fa cup and if you going to s- oh oh united had a better season right ten hag is doing better than arteta i swear if, i'm not talking about people like yeah, nahal probably will probably, probably, probably neutral like fans to. and they probably right to when it comes to just straight up like trophies sure but hmm. if uh, i mean if you're saying uh, a club then i'm so sorry but like you were in a title challenge in 2013 14 
that was uh, a fluke exactly. that was basically a fluke what is a fluke you had sterling you had swaz yeah, exactly. you had good you, you, man, that was not was sustainable that was that was not even a top 4 team man come on yeah but you guys losing the title was a fluke like was an anomaly like yeah, you guys the, were the season overall right you had a, the thing is the players were used to being in a race that's a very different thing than players who have never ever done anything and that was just a year after before klopp came no 13 14 okay you know, i think uh, i think arteta did a really smart thing right he's like okay it's going to take 6 uh, years for me to finish cooking so i just give everyone an appetizer at the start so he just won the fa cup so that at least in the tally it will be like okay one trophy and he's been starving you since fa cup after that he hasn't given two fucks about the fa cup i wouldn't call it starving though I wouldn't okay. call it star. Yeah. If, it, okay, is... here's the thing. If we don't win anything next year, anything, zero <laughs> things, <laughs> that's when like we'll be like okay, this is concerning <laughs> because this <laughs> is <laughs> now we're getting to a bottle. But like challenging for two years in a row, come into the quarterfinals of Champions League after not playing the competition for 7 years is fine, dude. It's fine. We Listen, just I'm have just glad we didn't get pumped by who <laughs> kicked us out of okay. the Champions League. We I'm, gave I'm them a good against... fight. I'm not against Arsenal or Arteta. I'm totally with with you guys. I mean, I I like what Arteta is doing. I'm just answering what Nirav was was asking the, earlier in terms of like yes, I mean Liverpool did when Klopp came in. Yes, the squad was completely different to what 13-14 was. None of them had any of these title challenge title challenges or experience of being in a title running and all that. So when Klopp came in, when he kind of got his you know got his players in and all that, I think the only p- people who were there were Henderson and Lovren, I guess, from that season. So 15-16 he came in first season. If you know got into FA Cup sorry the quarter carabao cup uh, and then next season he finished top 4 the season after he was that 98 point season where we lost and then next season we won so yeah i think technically yes we did do that but the way arsenal are progressing and you know working out working out with that it i think again if it, if someone complains it they just don't have a point they are just kind of giving you a scoreline analysis i think which is kind of bullshit I and mean, you know if you just kind of say that oh yeah i, I think, think it's mostly chelsea yeah. fans online Yeah, it's just out of tribalism, man. So. I don't, don't really. Work. I feel like it's a mat. It's just a matter of time, man. Yeah. Just a matter of time before uh, things happen. Yeah. Yep. I think there is no rationalism to the criticism. They are just like probably extremely vengeful of your club. That's it. Like they just don't want Arsenal to succeed, and anything that Arsenal touches, they will see with a weird, uh, irrational like criticism that no Arteta is like not a. is not a success arteta is not a success. Look, i mean people who have a level head and who've seen the process and who know thing good things are happening can just stay calm and just focus on it right exactly and, mm. and i think your books are really good so you guys can spend a lot of money this summer like right money and recruitment has always been a positive for arteta since he came in including clearing out the things that are not necessary and i think arsenal believe it or not have a very big season in terms of like outgoings of the people mm-hmm. that they want to move on and get new people in and i think if they nail that right it's it's going to be fucking insane guys like next season because it's you guys are set up to like challenge again and again and again what what no do we do right. about hazus and zini what, what do we do it's a great question actually like them what good squad hmm? good squad players you know what the most the thing that i'm most excited about <laughs> is the fact that if city end up winning the premier league again this will be four in a row and i think now at least the motivation reduces cuz if at this point if they're still motivated to win five in a row then fuck that team honestly like enough and club going from liverpool i feel like there'll be a small reset i mean liverpool's going to face what united faced after ferguson arsenal faced after arsenal it's not, it's inevitable it's going to happen mm. it will be very rare for them maybe, to challenge again maybe they can another. go to liverpool <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh but yeah like if amarim comes in i i don't see them challenging straight straight away i think mm-hmm. i've been a probably agree right like i mean it's it's there, not there are some yeah. reports it is that going salah has already the... bought a house in saudi arabia so yeah i mean if salah it's not just the manager you have players there's going to be an exodus of players as well oh yeah i mean i think i 
totally agree. I think even if Salah leaves this season, I'm not like too overly concerned. I think we need a sort of mini reset, not on the scale of United or not on the scale of Arsenal when you know Ferguson and, and Wenger left. Because I think the club's foundation is still good with everyone coming back, with Michael Edwards and all of the backroom staff coming back. I think we are still in a good place, to be honest. Uh, it's not good. And, and also Klopp did not overstay his welcome, sort of like Wenger did. Like I think it was evident the last three, four years or three years of Wenger was basically like he was kind of... He was out of his depth in some ways and he was just kind of, you know, he, the club needed to move on anyway. But with Klopp leaving and Edwards coming back, and I think they'll, there's going to be more ruthlessness uh, in the Liverpool squad going forward. It will be less emotional, which will suck for us as fans. But And yes, there will be a reset, but it's not going to be on the scale of like United or Arsenal. Yeah, a couple of years, maybe finishing in top, top four, winning the odd trophy here and there. But yeah, I think we're still in a good shape. All right, bro. We hear you. <laughs> Uh, uh, Abhinav, the reason you said success. you said that oh we don't you don't need a reset at the level of Arsenal or United because that would mean waiting for like eight to ten years for things to start working again. It's it's not like you're looking it's at the squad and you're judging. Working, so. <laughs> it still hasn't hasn't started working and it's been twelve years now. So mm. God knows how long. I think we've we'll we'll wait and see. And we'll also wait and see with the fixtures because even even if you guys win all of the games and like have the right manager come in in the future, we invest a lot of things. There's still going to be Pep Guardiola and his city. So we'll all see. This might just be all talk for ourselves and we see a five in a row, six in a row, seven in a row. <laughs> <laughs> like, Honestly, I just, I, this year is the year, man. Like if somehow someone slips and I don't even care about Liverpool because, you know, if Klopp wins, fine. They're still going to have that reset. Every, that's inevitable. That's happening. He's leaving. It's not like he's going to change his decision. But if by chance we win the title, right, it's going to be huge for us. Like that duck, breaking that duck. And I feel like we'll be able to compete with Pep even if he stays for the next four years. Fuck him, honestly. But if we lose it again next year, again, Pep will be just like everyone will think about that team as inevitable. No, but, we... but it will be really nice, right? That they don't win anything this year if Pep, if we win the Premier League, right? And hmm. United somehow beats City in the final. It'll hmm. be like everyone together held hands and cucked Pep. <laughs> Liverpool <laughs> won, <laughs> Liverpool won uh, Carabao Cup and then United won the FA Cup. Arsenal won the Premier League. Madrid won the, I mean, whoever wins the Champions League and City wins nothing. And the community shield as well. So, <laughs> so all of us are going to do a one parade with Liverpool United and uh, and pass one parade yeah. at the Etihad Hart Stadium and that's outside that. Pep's house. Yeah. See, what you have said would be very beautiful if City had any fans, right? Like we don't have anyone to like cuck. No, with. fuck the fans. This is just like to just fuck with the... Pep's head. That's it. Just to psychologically. Yeah. Just all of the entire Premier League. I mean, I I think the re- the reason I mean. He he is prone to these things. I think he took a two-year break, right? After Barcelona. So, he does yeah. have a psychological limit. We just need to get there. We need to kick him out and he should never come back to the Premier League. Yeah. Just enough of Premier League. We've been talking about it for a while and like we will keep talking about it until the end of the season and for the rest of our lives, it looks like because uh, <laughs> that's, that's how like helpless we are. Personally. In 2060, United will win something. <laughs> Someday. Hopefully. We will Hopefully before I die. Is yeah. The yeah. That what depression? is the average lifespan of a human being and how old is that? <laughs> <laughs> Do the math. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's good. That, that wraps up the Premier League in a nutshell. Uh, let's move to, like, I want to talk about I know I began the episode by saying that a lot happened in the midweek in the quarterfinals. I wanted to like bear you those details because I know it ended in nightmare for all of you. I actually want to talk about the winners, right? Like Real Madrid and Bayern Munich and PSG and um, fuck <laughs> PSG Dortmund. and Dortmund. PSG and Dortmund. Um, so it's going to be like an interesting interesting two uh, sets of fixtures i want to focus on the first one like who who do you guys think will win like what is the outcome in your head madrid are favorites i guess and mm. uh, is it after that i think i think the psg it's there's so much money spent there 
like they have to sh- at least win one champions league right they've been to a final and, before no yeah they have yeah. Yeah. they have lost yeah. versus bayern 2020 yeah yeah 2020 so they've yeah. been for to me, a final. Uh, for right. me i think madrid bayern again madrid is the inevitable team in the cl but um something about this bayern team is that they are playing on the edge like seeing them against arsenal even though like you know we play to player better better than them we play better football than them but just the way you know they their season is hanging right now and how big of an institution that is and how much of a european heritage they have they they have had this added motivation and they just seem really strong you know on both sides of the pitch they have really good players so they can absorb absorb all of the football they're not going to play like city against real madrid both the teams are the type kind of teams who can really play well in transition so it'll be a very interesting game and i feel like it'll be more end to end than we think and mm. there is a really good chance that bayern come away with a win so i will probably this time i know it's uh, like probably the odd makers are not going to agree with me but i'm going to go for a bayern win uh, and bayern going into the final and i'm probably going to go for an all german final at wembley again in 2024 after 2013 jaden uh, sancho man he's coming back to wembley i'm robins not going to win it for bayern oh. this time this time uh, jaden sancho is going to win it for dortmund and that'll be the final nail in the coffin for uh, ten hag if champion if sancho wins <laughs> champions league i think we need to pay more money i don't know if he wins with dortmund we have to pay them more money or like with united i'm pretty the hilarious imagine <laughs> that would be the best thing in the world bro like i mean i swear to god we need to check up we need to uh, you know hire someone to see that contract we need to see the details of it if that happens that is hilarious it's kind of like what happened with philip coutinho right Yeah. Um in his contract there was like Champions League winning clause he goes to Bayern wins it uh and then they had to play at pay Liverpool right mm-hmm. I don't know I yeah, think something like that yeah exactly and i think that contract i think that was a uh, michael edwards master stroke i guess i think i think it was, it also included a clause where barcelona cannot poach more players from liverpool or something like that i think i mean the, the way that contract oh, was uh, just it's just amazing but yeah just just one thing so nirav if if dortmund do win the champions league who's going to win the ballon d'or or mm-hmm. well, what do you guys think who's going to because the mbappe is gone and i don't i don't think he has done anything bellingham is gone and uh, and i think who's the other team like is gone Harry, as in gone as in like so from from the contender list right for for the ballon d'or no no i mean the euros ballon d'or it's going to be influenced by the euros what what happens in that okay so, yeah. i feel but, like but what we going for i mean what we going for like no i because I, my i was thinking it's it's between bellingham or mbappe or or maybe harry kane mm. one of those three like i mean obviously like euros will play a part definitely i get that but i'm just yeah. like wondering who who will be if dortmund do win the champions league and these guys are like you know they, they're not there I'm not sure. Like, the thing is, Harry Kane, Harry Kane, and Bellingham won't win it because England are not going to win the Euros. Mm-hmm. And if they don't win the Champions League, they're just it's just not going to happen. So I would say if if Dortmund win it and uh, PSG go to the final, a very undeserved Mbappe victory is going to come because France will win the Euros. If France win the Euros, if France don't win the Euros, it's a toss up. Honestly, just give it to anyone. You know, or maybe they'll just give it. Or maybe they'll just give it to Messi again. Just so you know, it's, it. it's good. <laughs> let, let me let me tell you. If wins, wins the MLS with Inter Miami, and if he wins the yeah. Copa, the thing ah, is, he yeah. can't win the MLS with Inter Miami, bro. He just can't. Inter Miami is a garbage team. Sorry, they're top of the league right now. Is something of that sort. Like, aren't they top of the league? Top of the league. Yeah. No, they're not. They are. I, I'm an Inter Miami fan. I don't even know what they're doing. Yeah, they're top, top of the league. league. the top of the top of the eastern conference yeah. max yeah okay uh, still won't win this is what <laughs> but just in the scenario yeah. right if, if they win if, if they win and if copa america right i think that that's happening this summer, summer as well if if argentina wins it why what is it to say that messi won't win the ballon d'or one more time yeah <laughs> is it not riding in the us to make messi win the mls too like yeah. they want messi right. to win the mls <laughs> on the map before the this thing but It'll be hilarious, dude. If like Ballon d'Or is given to Messi, like <laughs> this when like they're gonna Perfect. want to like actually talk to these fans who are still defending that. Like, that then we will have we'll a bring one Ayush hour on. We'll bring Ayush on we'll, to give us thoughts. We will have a one-hour segment of just uh, the Prayag show. 
Messi Messi and there Prayag will be watching old Messi videos and ja- jacking off I guess uh, but uh, no dude let's just let's just be real if that happens we all collectively should stop watching football but I don't think not watch football to stop watching Ballon d'Or football has nothing to do with this uh, I doubt that's gonna happen if I had to pick someone for Ballon d'Or it's probably uh, going to be Mbappe because i feel like they're going to be strong in the in the euros if real madrid win the champions league i think it'll be a really hard argument not to give to bellingham because they'll push but if for... brazil win the copa america why and, not win and if bayern wins maybe musiala is also musiala and germany could need... be one if if he really contributes to like if he yeah even the euros right so that is also a possibility yeah i think vinny is very in, everyone in that real madrid squad acknowledges that like uh, bellingham is their alpha i think hmm. they have that like oh, weird... who have you spoken to <laughs> no dude like, like, he, he's on the bench right like he's on the bench he's like playing almost like a second striker like he it's his team like and everyone's playing around him so I don't know. I don't know if they're. I mean, he has to have that performance with England as well because that's. I mean, yeah, I think there is a very wait. high likelihood because England are he, the good. He's also charismatic <laughs> that way. Yeah, yeah. So Who knows? Dude, like if, out. I I feel like England have like second or the third best chances odds to win the Euros, and if he has a deep run, like you can't deny the argument that like wearing. Yeah, I, be... I think the talent will oversee like supersede Southgate, like even though he's shit. The amount of talent that they have is yeah. is just going to get it over the line. I mean, all of those players are playing for like insanely top teams, like and under insanely good managers, like Ford and sure. Saka, like everyone but Mainu in that. Kobe Mainu. <laughs> everyone who's playing top managers. Uh, I don't know how much. I I agree. I think talent will supersede the era aura of Southgate, and we'll see. Who's who's it. a player in Dortmund? There's a British player, right? English player in Dortmund. Sancho? Uh, Sancho, right? No, no. Uh, Not Sancho. Uh, there's yeah. someone else. Yeah. He's all, he yeah. also seems anyway, pretty good. We, I mean, we digressed so hard and went to Ballon d'Or. But going back to the Champions League um, finals, the, wanted to take predictions, basically. Who's, who do you guys think is going to win? How is, how is it going to play, uh, play out? And uh, like quickly, who you think is going to be the star of like who's going to get his team to uh win let's start with avinav um i'm going for sentimentality and romance i guess i i just want royce to win the champions league in his last ever match for dortmund i'm not that he's going to do anything in that i think it most of it will be the other team members but i don't know i have i have no basis to this but you know PSG weren't as good against Barcelona. It's just that that red card kind of you know gave it gave them that opening. If Bayern can sorry if Dortmund can play to their ability, I think they should see off a PSG hopefully. And then this side, I think it's it's going to be Real Madrid. I think Real only struggle against teams like you know City who create these more chances and all that. I think they struggled a bit, but again, I think I think against Bayern, Real have the edge uh, with the Champions League history and everything. So Real Madrid and Dortmund. Again, no basis. It's just Roy is going to come out in the 97th minute, score a winner, and he's going to get the Champions League. But that's it. Alone, Aubameyang for this game. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Hmm. Aubameyang dunking on Real Madrid, right? Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, Prayag- but- I, I think Madrid are just too clutch. So, and I don't think that it's just any specific player. I feel like they all rise to the occasion. Like if Vinicius isn't doing well, Rodrigo steps up. So. I'm not going to point to any specific player, but I think it is going to be Madrid versus PSG, and uh, it is going to be like 88 minute winner, winner two one. 88. Wow, that's very specific, bro. Which which uh, like bro? Sergio Ramos. Ramos. Remember. Which bro? Oh, Eighty eight minute. Hmm. Yeah, I went to his computer brain to calculate exactly, predict exactly <laughs> what's going to happen. Um, but. Uh, who do you have? Who do you have being like the player of the tournament of the from the semi-finals till the finals? Who's gonna take his team? Not Bellingham. Mm, I think Vinicius. Not Bellingham. I think I think he's just too good. Vinicius. Any? Cool. Um, Nehal. I um, I think Dortmund. Their first leg is at home, so I think uh, they won't have that much of an effect in the second leg. I I want PSG to go through because I want Mbappe to win one title on his own because I'm. Really like Mbappe. I think he's like 
he he is that guy like he's just too arrogant and like he'll fuck up his career too soon but i want him to win the <laughs> champions league before he goes to real madrid just to like show how good he was under 25 years old uh but that's you know dreams but i think on the other le- fixture will they they'll pro- potentially be the winner i see your point about like tukel and also like bayern playing with a purpose and i think tukel is like a cup manager he's a good tactician and stuff like that so i'm thinking bayern might nick it through so it could be a bayern versus psg final for me and in the yeah. final i'll pick then if that final happens <laughs> yeah. what about you nira uh, at their own stadium are pretty strong and they're going to um score more goals than psg for sure so that's that's what i think and i'm going to switch it up i said that dortmund's going to win but that's what i want but reality is i think it's hurricanes uh year after and not hurricane yeah. he he does not score when it matters so no, i don't think after not being his win. year this is going to be his year mm-hmm. i'm telling you and <laughs> the whole year everyone's been cursing him but he's going to finish well he's going to yeah. get the cl that's it uh, yeah. everything will be over after that people will be celebrating in munich and in north london also <laughs> Because for them, that is like, yes, our Harry Kane has won the Champions League. Our Harry Kane. <laughs> They're going to do that. They're going to flex their UCL title on us. <laughs> One to us, zero to you. <laughs> but but imagine mm. this though. Like if, if Tuchel goes to final and then loses to PSG, the exact opposite of 2020, I think he was with PSG and lost to Bayern. Him going to... <laughs> 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 going with Bayern and losing to PSG. He'll, he'll break his other leg this time. <laughs> yeah, his right leg was broken, right? He'll break his left leg. You remember the whole final years in crunches? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's too good. Uh, Nariya to not miss. But, yeah, but these are like some extremely entertaining set of like uh, uh, semi-finals and the two most boring teams on the planet, Arsenal and Man City, are out, thankfully. So, it's going to be a very exciting uh, game.